there are a million ways to deploy your app, but most of them are shit. And I'm going to explain why. I'm going to explain why you might want to deploy on this new platform that I found that's actually fucking goaded. And what the problem with these platforms are. So right here, we're on Vercel's uh, landing page, which you actually can't get to unless you go to an incognito tab. Because they direct you to the dashboard, which pisses me off when apps do that. But anyways, I just want to go over to the pricing here. And I'm not going to talk about how your serverless bill goes insane and you end up you know, homeless because your app, you have like some unclosed loop or something. No, what I'm talking about is this. Collaborate with a team for $20 per month per member. Why the fuck should I pay per user when the entire purpose of my app is to serve users? Pay per member, when, you know what I'm saying, right? If we go to Superbase, they don't have this problem. They are genius if we go down to their plan details and we go to users here we go total users unlimited on any plan and same thing for trigger.dev okay so if we go to pricing i don't know where it says it but basically okay five team members five team members and then 25 team members for 50 bucks a month this is the way it should be done it should be primarily based on usage and your tier and what you're actually doing not just how many members you have on your team, right? And this is especially problematic when I'm working with clients and right now I'm onboarding them onto Trigger and Supabase, but when it comes to Vercel, we either have to share logins or they actually have to pay like 40 bucks a month minimum to have me on there and actually like make changes to their account. So it's just not good and it's not a good way of like onboarding clients and you know, down the line when you actually wanna deploy things and work with people, you're just going to get fucked. So let me talk you through some of the options that I really like. Um, so yeah, the, the, the problem essentially is that you can do workflows and your database and some like edge functions with Superbase and Trigger. And those are free to get started. And like I said, it's usage-based pricing. But the issue is that we don't have a front end, a way to host front end. You can technically host it with a Dino uh, edge function on Superbase just by returning pure HTML, but that's not really a way to build a web app. Um, what you need is a way to host your front end. So let me close out of these and we'll see our three top choices, okay? These are kind of the, the hosting platforms that I found to be the newest and most modern, but also the most robust. So if you think about like Hetzner or DigitalOcean, these are kind of like your, you know, like let's go to digitalocean.com, okay? And I guess it doesn't look that bad, but their dashboard is shit. And then if we go to Hetzner, Hetzner, I mean, just look at this website. What the fuck is this, dude? This is insane. And same thing goes for Netlify, not Netflix, Netlify. It's just, it just doesn't really give off a good vibe. And I know some people are probably watching like, bro, you care about the website? Yeah, no shit, dude. Your website is the front page. And this tells me how serious you are about the UX. You know what I mean? And the reason I use Super Basic Trigger is because I care about the UX. I want to get shit done and I want it to be seamless. I don't want to spend fucking eight hours trying to figure out how to change my environment variables, right? So anyways, fuck these platforms. That's it. That came off wrong. Basically, they're not the preference, okay? The preference is these three. So you may have heard of these. There's Railway.app, Render.com, and then fly.io. And we'll start down at the bottom here. Railway, I do quite like Railway because you have a lot of stuff all in one place. You have, you know, your, um, you can have like GitHub repos and different like uh, servers for your back end, your front end. You can have a Postgres database, Redis. You can have a lot of stuff, but they are let down by a couple of things. First thing is there's no native like kind of S3 solution. So Superbase has that out of the box and that's perfect. But with this, you don't get that. And so you're going to end up, you might end up with a problem where you need to use S3 and you have to go to Amazon. You have to set that up. And in my case, I have to get a client to sign up for some solution for S3, whereas there are platforms out there that offer it. Um, and another thing with Railway, there is a free trial, but there's no free plan. So you can't just host something for free and just get started. You always just get cooked. Okay. And then if we go to render, I mean, this is a little bit horrendous. So 
I was playing around with this and I, I was trying to create these four services. You have database, you have your back end, your front end, and then you have your S3 or your storage. And what I found is first of all, there's no S3. This is on their like ideas board and it's, it's in progress. But then if we go to, um, yeah, let's just, let's just add, or no, let's not add a new environment. Let's just add a new service. Okay. And let's go with a, a, a web service and let's go actually. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, for God's sake. All right, whatever. I'll, I'll just show you this one. So if we go to scaling, I think, wait, okay. So this was, this is what I was trying to show you. So if we go to create a new Svelte kit instance and we scroll down, this is our, our instant type and we can do free, but I'll show you the problem with that. Or it starts at seven bucks a month. And so if you think about it, each of these services is around seven bucks a month. And so you're going to be looking at like, you know, what would that be like 30 bucks a month for these four services when with Superbase and trigger, you could have them both for free. You know what I mean? At like a low scale. And so it's just not ideal. And then let's come over to the SvelteCat app, which is actually hosted. But if I try to open it, what we're going to find is a horrendous cold start. Like what the fuck is going on? Let last time it just threw like a 500 error and it didn't even boot up. But this is our cold start. So, yeah, if, if you need people to use your free app, I mean, good luck because it, it spins down after, I don't know, 30 seconds or whatever their cold start threshold is. And then you get this. This website is still loading. W what the fuck is the deal with this, dude? This is just... There we go. Wow. Dude, latency zero, basically. <laughs> All right. So this is a shit service. I mean, there's literally no point in using their free tier. So render for me i'm out like i want to be able to spin shit up fast and just play with it um for free rather than spending like money or getting cooked with this fucking spin up time so as you can tell we're on to our third option which i actually quite love and um the thing with fly is they used to have a different landing page where it was all about their globally distributed network so here we go here's their kind of um graphic about this they've switched off of this messaging so much because it used to basically say we're the globally distributed edge network for deployment so we have locations all over the world and we make sure that wherever your user is they get really low latency and that's that's great but i don't really give a shit about that I, i'm not trying to sell my app to someone in fucking uganda most of my users are in north america so i quite frankly don't give a shit where my data is, is, is uh, hosted. But now they've changed the messaging and I actually wanted to try it out, especially because all right, I'm trying to find this Reddit post, but I, I was doing a bunch of research on where to host and everyone in the comments just kept saying, fly, 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 fly is the best. And I was like, I don't want to try it because of that global thing. It's like, I don't need that. And it seems the wrong focus, but I actually gave it a try and yeah, it's badass. So let's go to the dashboard. And what we can see here is it's fucking gorgeous, dude. It looks so good. Like this is one of the best kind of looking dashboards I've ever seen, like for an app. And they have so many things about fly that just make me love it. Like, okay, basically all of your, instead of being like serverless, completely serviced, like Vercel, you start out with like one or two machines, which can be shut off when they're not getting traffic. And they use uh, Firecracker, which is the same thing AWS Lambda uses. And so the cold start is like a quarter of a second. It's like extremely fast. And then it scales up from there. So you don't have to worry about scaling or anything like that. And then importantly, they have uh, Upstash. So they have Redis. So you can run like, you know, use a Redis instance. They also have object storage, which is like S S3. And then they also have Postgres. So you get literally any server, any static front end, anything you can imagine. Plus you get object storage, Redis and Postgres. That's all you need to build a fully fledged app. I think Fly is just an extremely strong app. See, it's pay as you go. And yeah, I mean, it might be a little bit more complicated than those other platforms, but overall it's just fucking amazing. Um, I've really liked it so far. I've only built two programs with it, but yeah, anyways, um, 
Let me know what you're using for hosting. I'm, I'm really curious, but I think Fly will be my choice if, if I have a client who wants to move off of kind of cloud offerings like Supabase and Trigger.dev. Even though they have self-hosting op, uh, options, um, I think it could be really good to go with kind of like a more ground-up infrastructure that is a little bit more reliable in the long term where you don't have to worry about like you know things breaking or going down with super base or trigger um but yeah anyways hopefully this video is interesting and see you in the next one